Welcome to week 12 of Explore the Bible. And we're continuing in the book of Micah. We've only got a couple of Sundays left in this quarter. Uh, but uh, looking forward to going into this passage. You're going to have a little bit of a kind of a Christmas message here, even though we are before Thanksgiving, still in the month of November. But we'll see that as we go through this. Before we dive into Micah chapter 4 and 5, be sure and like the video. Subscribe to our channel. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. So every Monday you'll get it. Uh, press a little bell for a notification. You'll get a notification that uh, the video is online comment if you've got questions answers those kinds of things and share it with others we really appreciate when you do that all right let's look at chapter four beginning on that day this is the lord's declaration i will assemble the lame and gather the scattered those i have injured i will make the lame into a remnant those far removed into a strong nation then the lord will reign over them in mount zion from this time on and forever and you Watchtower for the flock, fortified hill of daughter Zion. The former rule will come to you. Sovereignty will come to daughter Jerusalem. Okay, this phrase on that day. That day is this uh, common Old Testament phrase to speak of uh, kind of the end times, the second coming we would think of in, in New Testament terms, right? But at the end, when the Lord brings about his final judgment on the on the earth and things are finally settled out and, and he has um, made the decision on everything and acted to redeem the world, the earth, uh, for himself, right? On that day, this is the Lord's declaration. This is what God says, on that day, I will assemble the lame and gather the scattered, those I have injured. I will make the lame into a remnant, those far removed into a strong nation. The Lord says, I'm going to gather up all of those who are his, right? These scattered peoples, these who are in great need and can only have hope because of him, which is all of us, but not everybody accepts that, right? Wants to follow that, who is willing to. He says, I'm going to gather people from all four corners. He's going to be gathering people together into a strong nation and he will reign over them in Mount Zion from this time on and forever. The Lord will reign over his people forever, for all time, that everything will be settled out at that moment. You know, there, there is a, a promise here that sometimes is all we have to hold on to, to know that one day the Lord will make everything right. And that's not terrible, is it? If that's all you've got, that's pretty good. Um, but, but realize that there may be a time when you think you have nothing, but you still have that promise. You still have that promise that the Lord will make one day, will make everything right. Right, and that that which has been destroyed will come back and rule over all the others. Now, daughter, who is under attack, you slash yourself in grief. A siege is set against us. They are striking the judge of Israel on the cheek with a rod. Bethlehem, Ephrathah, you are small among the clans of Judah. One will come from you to be ruler over Israel for me. His origin is from antiquity, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor has given birth and the rest of the ruler's brothers will return to the people of Israel. Okay, <clears throat> he's saying that at that moment when you think all is lost, at that moment when you're under attack and, and, and uh, you, you're almost like, I want to kill myself, I don't have that way out, right? Um, that, that we're being hit and strike the judge of Israel on the other cheek. You just, you're hit over and over again. You're beat down. The world has come to an end. The sense that we don't have any hope now, at that moment, he will provide a deliverer. In this verse that uh, is quoted right, in the New Testament to let us know that the Lord had said from Bethlehem would come this ruler over Israel, right? that the Lord will take in that moment, he will work in the smallest, you know, kind of the smallest town or the smallest tribe, right? This In this little place that, that nobody thinks about, nobody considers of any worth in this little place that nobody is, is uh, wanting to be in. And people are out without hope at that moment will come the ruler over Israel for me. Clearly, this is our prophecy about the coming of Jesus, right? His origin from antiquity, from ancient times. Uh, this is a way of saying it is eternal. It comes, he's always been, right? Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until that time when she who is in labor has given birth. In other words, 400 years 
of, of uh, prophetic silence uh, from the last prophet until the coming of John the Baptist, who precedes Jesus by a few months. 400 years of prophetic silence. Can you imagine? I think it's hard. Have uh, you ever been through that time when you thought the Lord was not speaking, you, you couldn't hear him, uh, and you wondered if he heard you? You know, just like there was a silence, a, a holy silence from the Lord. And, and you struggle through that. Let me tell you, that happens to believers. It's not It's not always because of sin. Sometimes it's just the Lord being quiet. And, and we still need to pursue him because I don't pursue him for his words and his wisdom. I pursue him because he's God. <coughs> Excuse me. So this sense of, you know, that may for, for us may last a few days, a few weeks, a few months, maybe years. I don't know. 400 years for Israel. 400 years. They didn't hear anything new from the Lord. They didn't have a prophet for 400 years, and you begin to wonder. But he says, He will stand and strength and shepherd them in the strength of the Lord and the majestic name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will extend to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. When Assyria invades our land, when it marches against our fortresses, we will raise against it seven shepherds, even eight leaders of men. They will shepherd the land of Assyria with a sword, land of Nimrod with a drawn blade, so he will rescue us from Assyria when it invades our land, when it marches against our territory. This description of the Lord, the Jesus, he stands and shepherds us in the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God, right? And so then you live securely, for his greatness extends to the ends of the earth. From tiny Bethlehem, his greatness extends to the end of the earth, and then I love this, he will be their peace. It does not say <clears throat> excuse me, it does not say he will bring them peace. It does not say he will show them peace. It does not say uh, they will find peace among themselves. It says that he will be their peace. Jesus is our peace. He is the one. He doesn't bring us peace. He brings us himself, and in him we find peace. Peace that, as Paul wrote, passes all understanding. This is the joy that comes from knowing the Lord, this promise that the invasion happens, there's going to be this great invasion run, and there's going to be terrible things happen, but he will rescue us. He will rescue us. This is who the Lord is, this promise of a Savior who will come. <clears throat> it was hundreds, 700 years before Jesus is born. We get upset when, you know, when our burger takes an extra few minutes at Whataburger. <laughs> 700 years before this prophecy came true. Right, we need to stand on that and know that the Lord will keep his promise. He says, Then the remnant of Jacob will be among many peoples like dew from the Lord, like showers on the grass which do not wait for anyone or linger for mankind. Then the remnant of Jacob will be among the nations, among many peoples, like a lion among animals of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep with tramples and tears as it passes through and there is no one to rescue them. Your hand will be lifted up against your adversaries and all your enemies will be destroyed. The remnant of Jacob, <coughs> catch this, will be among many peoples. It's not just the nation of Israel that will be saved. There will be many people will have will be uh, have members of this new remnant of Jacob. This is believers who come from all all over the world. There will be people following Jesus from all over the world. It will extend everywhere, right? Like showers on the grass. Right? It's going to be uh, everywhere. The dew. It covers everything, right? It's everywhere. This is the way it will be. The, the believers will be all over, right? They don't wait for anyone or linger for mankind. The Lord does, and the Lord moves, and he doesn't wait on us, right? The remnant will be among the nations. Again, he says, among the nations, among many peoples. Again, that this here Micah is prophesying about the spread of the gospel all over the world. And not that gospel-believing Jews will go all over, which does happen, but that the gospel will go all over into all the peoples of the world. And, and the Lord will destroy our enemies one day. Hang on to that promise, okay? 
hang on to that. The Lord keeps his promises. Thanks for watching. I hope this has helped. God bless you. Thank you for going, all right? Thanksgiving's coming up soon. Looking forward to that. Hope you are too. We'll see you next week. Oh, hey, subscribe, like, share, all that kind of stuff too.